When you think of the very first car, what do you imagine? Maybe a car made out of tree branches with stone wheels, powered by Fred Flintstone's feet, or a quaint little buggy with thin, oversized tires driven by a man wearing a top hat. What did the very first cars look like, and how have they changed over the years? They're probably a little different than you'd think. By definition, an automobile or car is a wheeled vehicle that carries its own motor and transports passengers. The automobile as we know it was not invented in a single day by a single inventor. The history of the automobile reflects an evolution that took place worldwide. It is estimated that over 100,000 patents created the modern automobile. You can point to the many firsts that occurred along the way to producing the first modern car. It started with the first theoretical plans for a motor vehicle that had been drawn up by both Leonardo da Vinci and Isaac Newton. In 1478, Leonardo da Vinci invents the self-propelled car. This happens many years before anyone else is even thinking about automobiles. However, the car remains a sketch on paper and is never actually made. This self-propelled car is not a car like the ones we see today. It is more similar to a cart and does not have a seat. In 2004, a replica of da Vinci's car is finally crafted. It can be seen on display at the Institute and Museum of the History of Science in Florence, Italy. Ferdinand Verbiest, a member of a Jesuit mission in China, built a steam-powered vehicle around 1672 as a toy for the Kangxi Emperor. It was small-scale and could not carry a driver, but it was, quite possibly, the first working steam-powered vehicle, Automobile. In 1769, the very first self-propelled road vehicle was a military tractor invented by French engineer and mechanic Nicolas Joseph Cugnot. Cugnot used a steam engine to power his vehicle, but under his instructions at the Paris Arsenal by mechanic Brezin. It was used by the French army to haul artillery at a whopping speed of 2.5 miles per hour on only three wheels. The vehicle had to stop every 10 to 15 minutes to build up steam power. The steam engine and boiler were separate from the rest of the vehicle and placed in the front. In 1771, Cugnot drove one of his road vehicles into a stone wall, making Cugnot the first person to get into a motor vehicle accident. This was the beginning of bad luck for the inventor. After one of Cugnot's patrons died and the other was exiled, the money for Cugnot's road vehicle experiments ended. Steam engines powered cars by burning fuel that heated water in a boiler, creating steam that expanded and pushed pistons that turned the crankshaft which then turned the wheels. During the early history of self-propelled vehicles, both road and railroad vehicles were being developed with steam engines. Steam engines added so much weight to a vehicle that they proved a poor design for road vehicles. However, steam engines were very successfully used in locomotives. Historians, who accept that early steam-powered road vehicles were automobiles, feel that Nicolas Cugnot was the inventor of the first automobile. As Cugnot's design proved to be impractical, his invention was not developed in his native France the center of innovation shifted to Great Britain. By 1784, William Murdoch had built a working model of a steam carriage in Redruth. In 1801, Richard Trevithick built and demonstrated his Puffing Devil road locomotive, believed by many to be the first demonstration of a steam-powered road vehicle. It was unable to maintain sufficient steam pressure for long periods and was of little practical use. In 1807, Nicephore Nietzsche and his brother Claude created what was probably the world's first internal combustion engine, which they called a pyrolophore, but installed it in a boat on the River Soane in France. Coincidentally, in 1807, the Swiss inventor Francois-Isaac de Rivaz designed his own de Rivaz internal combustion engine and used it to develop the world's first vehicle to be powered by such an engine. The Nietzsche's pyrolophore was fueled by a mixture of lycopodium power, dried spores of the lycopodium plant, finely crushed coal dust and resin that were mixed with oil, whereas de Rivaz used a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. Neither design was very successful, as was the case with others, such as Samuel Brown, Samuel Maury, and Etienne Lenoir with his Hippomobile, who each produced vehicles usually adapted carriages or carts powered by internal combustion engines. In November 1881, French inventor Gustave Trouvé demonstrated the first working three-wheeled car powered by electricity at the International Exposition of Electricity in Paris. Although several other German engineers were working on the problem at about the same time, the year 1886 is regarded as the birth year of the car when the German, Karl Benz, patented his Benz Patent Motorwagen. The original Benz Patent Motorwagen was built in 1885 and awarded the patent for the concept. In 1879, 
Benz was granted a patent for his first engine, which had been designed in 1878. Many of his other inventions made the use of the internal combustion engine feasible for powering a vehicle. His first motor wagon was built in 1885 in Mannheim, Germany. Benz began the promotion of the vehicle on July 3, 1886, and about 25 Benz vehicles were sold between 1888 and 1893 when his first four-wheeler was introduced along with a cheaper model. They also were powered by four-stroke engines of his own design. Emile Roger of France, already producing Benz engines under license, now added the Benz car to his line of products. Because France was more open to the early cars, initially, more were built and sold in France through Roger than Benz sold in Germany. In August 1888, Bertha Benz, the wife of Carl Benz, undertook the first road trip by car to prove the roadworthiness of her husband's invention. In 1896, Benz designed and patented the first internal combustion flat engine called Boxer Motor. During the last years of the 19th century, Benz was the largest car company in the world with 572 units produced in 1899 and, because of its size, Benz NC became a joint stock company. The first motor car in Central Europe and one of the first factory-made cars in the world was produced by Czech company Nieseldorfer Wagenbau, later renamed to Tatra, in 1897, the President Automobile. Towards the end of the 19th century, many automobile companies came up in Europe and America. They started producing different models. But these automobiles were expensive and only a few rich people could afford them like kings and rajas in India. An average person could not afford to own a car. Many attempts were made in Europe and America for reducing the costs. The large-scale production line manufacturing of affordable automobiles was started by Ransom Olds at his Oldsmobile factory in 1902. Based on the assembly line techniques pioneered by Mark Isambard Brunel at the Portsmouth Block Mills, England, in 1802. The assembly line style of mass production and interchangeable parts had been pioneered in the U.S. by Thomas Blanchard in 1821 at the Springfield Armory in Springfield, Massachusetts. This concept was greatly expanded by Henry Ford beginning in 1914. With the introduction of this new manufacturing process, Ford Motor Company launched the first large-scale production of their Model T. In 1914, an assembly line worker could buy a Model T with four months' pay. In Europe, the same happened. Morris set up its production line at Cowley in 1924 and soon outsold Ford while beginning in 1923 to follow Ford's practice of vertical integration. In 1925, Morris had 41% of the total British car production. Citroën, a French automobile manufacturer, started building motor cars in 1919 and employing mass production techniques within a year was manufacturing 100 cars a year. Renault's 10CV and Peugeot's 5CV produced 550,000 cars in 1925. Germany's first mass-manufactured car, the Opel 4PS Lobsfrosch, Tree Frog, came off the line at Russelsheim in 1924, soon making Opel the top car builder in Germany, with 37.5% of the market. Between World Wars I and II, a lot of attention from the automobile industry went toward the development of defense vehicles. As a result, several new vehicles like battle tanks and jeeps were developed. The tank became very popular in the war field. It is a very versatile vehicle that can run in any road condition. However, during this period, there were some very interesting designs in the passenger segment also. Volkswagen in Germany developed a car in the 1930s which looked like a crawling creature and was therefore called Beetle. The car was very convenient to drive and looked stylish. It became popular in Europe. If you liked our video, don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to our channel to learn more. Thank you.